Hey, this is Alexa Peterson with The Hitting Vault. I'm going to be doing a swing analysis on Mike Trout. Um, he was ranked yet again the number one player in, in the MLB by ESPN, um, and rightfully so. He's phenomenal on defense, and uh, speed-wise, he's phenomenal on the bases, and then uh, offensively, he's obviously unstoppable as well. Um, so let's check out some of the things that we see in his uh, mechanics here. So starting stance, a little bit taller, smaller between his feet here. A little bit more narrow stance. Front shoulder is still slightly lower than his back shoulder. He likes to have his hands up a little bit higher here. Nice comfortable position for him. Pretty tall. As we, as we see him get into his load, see him picking up that, that front foot, maintaining his posture by not letting this knee, this back knee, go way outside his back foot. He's staying stacked here, ready to go forward. Front shoulder is continuing to go down. Um, and starting to work down and in that front shoulder internal rotation here. But what we see with a lot of younger hitters that are trying to have a high leg kick like Mike Trout, they end up shifting all of their weight way on their backside and this front shoulder starts going up and there's no way for them to um, maintain that posture as they go down and forward into their launch position. Um, so he does a great job at getting um, kind of like hinging at his hip a little bit there, starting to create that uh, torso tilt down and in. His hands started so high up here that that's why you're seeing his hands drop a little bit, getting into a more neutral position for when he gets to his launch position. So his hands drop a little bit. Starts to go forward. Nice controlled movement going forward. Getting to his launch position right there, and that's a textbook launch position. Uh, launch position is right when that front heel hits. Um, so we're going to be looking at this position here. His knob is kind of down towards the catcher. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, his barrel is like really, really flat. And he does have his hands. As his hands, as he starts going forward, his barrel is pretty flat. It's actually more towards facing the umpire. But when he gets to his launch position, right when that heel hits right there, you'll see that he's got that knob right down towards the catcher, which is what we, what we see with the majority of elite hitters. Um, in the MLB and in professional softball as well as that knob is down towards the catcher right when that heel hits right there. Something else, he has his front shoulder still down um, slightly. There's some variances with some hitters. Some are steeper than others. But pretty much all elite hitters have um, that front shoulder slightly lower than that back shoulder. His hands are still up and back. They haven't started drifting forward. A lot of hitters, amateur hitters, will bring their hands starting to go too soon too early and you're missing out on the potential power and tension that you're created and that you can create by those hips starting to go just a little bit and then those hands staying up and back um, that's creating a lot of tension right there nice and balanced right here with his weight right in the middle a little bit of front knee bend start to go into his bat path and a lot of people say, like, don't drop your back shoulder. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty important to drop your back shoulder <laughs> in order to hit line drives in the gaps and home runs. Um, and how much you drop your back shoulder is dependent on the height, height of the pitch. So a pitch that's coming in really high up here, you're going to have a little bit flatter shoulders. Pitch that's really low, so you actually, say you accidentally swing at a pitch that's like in between your shins or in between your knee and your, um, and your ankles, that's going to need a lot of shoulder tilt um, or hip hinge, torso tilt, in order to be able to get that to be not a ground ball, but instead of having that be a line drive in the gap. Um, but what happens is that hitters tend to have that back shoulder drop too soon. So when someone's saying you're dropping your back shoulder, or you know, as coaches, you're saying don't drop your back shoulder, make sure that you're understanding like when that's happening. So what we don't want is that back shoulder to be dropping through this whole movement right here, going forward, and that back shoulder is dropping. You can see his, his back shoulder is not dropping. He's maintaining this position right there. Front shoulder down, back shoulder up. Right there to his launch position. His front shoulder is down, his back shoulder is up. So um, be careful as coaches that you're not saying don't drop your back shoulder, but look at the root as to like when is that back shoulder actually dropping. Is it dropping way back here as they're going forward? 
And when their heel hits, is their front shoulder up and their back shoulder down. That's that's not um, what elite hitters do. We have to have that good posture, front shoulder down, back shoulder up when that heel hits. So what we start to see after his launch position, his barrel works right on this path. Actually, that was a pretty, pretty good guess there with my line. <laughs> works that barrel behind him. His hips are turning hard towards the pitcher. Right there, his belt buckle is already at the pitcher, and his bat is back here. A lot of younger kids, um, their hips are not moving very fast or not moving at all, um, and it's just their hands that are pushing towards the ball. So you'll actually see them um, have a more steep bat path going straight down, or they're just weak at contact point because they're using only their upper body instead of their hips rotating, getting that belt buckle to the pitcher before contact. He does a good job at getting, maintaining good torso tilt throughout his swing all the way through. A lot of kids start to stand up with their, with their head, or as they get close to contact, they lose their torso tilt right here, or hip hinge, whatever you'd like to call it. Gets to his contact position, strong position there. We don't want to have, um, be really extended. A lot of hitters are extended like really far out front um, at contact point. That contact point, he does a great job at like making sure he's in a strong position with his elbows and his arms and his shoulders. Strong barrel position and he's not swinging and making contact way out here. He's also not making it really deep back here. This is a pitch that was actually just left middle. So this is kind of good standard um, position. He's making contact right off of his front foot right there. What you'll notice with him, and there's a lot of other hitters in the MLB that um, do it as well, but he actually does what's called, uh, a lot of people refer to as scissoring with his back foot. So if you look at his back foot right here, his toe actually ends up staying facing this way, whereas a hitter like Mookie Betts, he gets that whole, that whole foot and that knee is facing the pitcher. But Trout actually has his whole foot still facing this direction on every swing of his. But the difference with hitters that don't rotate this lower half, the lower half like their knee um, and their foot, the hitters that don't rotate that all the way typically don't rotate their belt buckle either. So if you have a hitter, you're like, oh man, they're not rotating their lower half at all, it's terrible take some video of their swing, pause it at contact point and see, and well, before contact, you should really see it. Is their belt buckle still getting towards the pitcher? That's the most important thing that's telling you that they're using their core and their, and their hips to rotate. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is bad, that they're, that they're not rotating all the way. Um, so there's a lot of hitters, there's not a lot of hitters, but there's a good amount of um, elite hitters that that don't rotate their lower, um, you know, their, their foot or their knee all the way. So like Cabrera, um, Chris Davis, those are some of, you know, some of the best hitters that are successful um, not rotating that back foot towards the pitcher. Jose Altuve is another great example. And so they kind of do what's, what's called scissoring is that back foot kind of goes backwards a little bit, but their belt buckle is still going towards the pitcher. So if we look over at this front view, you can see it really well. Gets to his launch position right there. You can see his number a little bit, his front shoulders down and in, creating that torso tilt or hip hinge. That goes where his back foot goes. goes this way. And that's not something that you necessarily want to teach every kid to do um, because with, with teaching that, um, not, not everybody has the mobility 
um, of being able to have that belt buckle at the pitcher, but their back foot going that way. It's not for everyone. Someone will naturally, if they're taking their belt buckle to the pitcher, they will naturally have this foot do that if that's what they're supposed to do. If that's their natural, um, how they're, they're biomechanical, biomechanically made to move with their hips going towards the pitcher, this is what will naturally happen. Otherwise, you're going to see it like um, Mookie Betts, who his, his, his foot actually turns all the way towards the pitcher and doesn't shift backwards at all. Which is good launch position. It's on plane early back here. A lot of hitters go straight towards the ball. You're not going to be, um, you're not. You're just going to make it hard for you to have your timing be. You're going to have to be perfect with your timing, and you're not going to be very powerful. This working back here and then getting on plane and extending through um, is going to give you the most power and contact and contact rate. So in terms of approach, what's interesting about Trout is that he's actually um, he's in the third percentile of um, of chase rate. So that means that ninety seven percent of hitters swing at more pitches outside the zone than he does. So there's a perfect example as to how important pitch selection is. Um, when he gets to his uh, three two count, he's when he gets to a three two count. He actually swings at 54% of those 3-2 count pitches versus Mookie Betts, who has a slightly different approach. He actually swings at 80% of those 3-2 count pitches. Um, but with Trout, he, ha he also has the highest unintentional walk rate in baseball. So that's kind of telling you the story of his approach. He's swinging hard at strikes. Um, he's not going to expand the zone and make it bigger than it is and make it more difficult for him. He's, he's attacking pitches that are hittable and that are in the zone and that are strikes. Um, with that, he's also the 83rd percentile for contact rate. Um, so very good barrel control throughout his whole swing. Um, and so when he does swing, he's not swinging and missing. Um, and what's also interesting is that he's... Uh, one of the highest hitters in the MLB to um, hit foul balls. He actually hits a lot of foul balls, um, which ends up having him work really deep into counts. But his ability to decipher balls and strikes helps him in terms of getting more walks and being, being successful when he does swing at those pitches that are in the zone. Um, so basically, the kind of the moral of the story from, for lear learning – from Mike Trout, is that you don't want to swing at, swing at pitches outside the zone, obviously. Um, trying to increase your contact rate um, to decrease the amount of your swinging and missing. And then when you're, when you're swinging, obviously making hard contact. That's how he's one of the best hitters in the MLB. Um, you can kind of tell by those stats and stuff. But, um, yeah, so he's, he's going to be most likely going to go down as one of the greatest hitters um, and players overall in the MLB um, because of his approach um, in being able to swing at strikes in the zone, hard, aggressive, um, and obviously his stature, his strength, um, all that plays in, into a um, key part for his swing and his success. Um, but overall, he's, I look forward to seeing him in the next you know, 10 years and, uh, and seeing him continue to grow as a player. And uh, I feel like the there's um, no, no, no ending point for his success or how, how good he can get. Um, he's proven it over the last couple of years um, that he's a phenomenal athlete and um, is making a huge impact on the game.